The Academy Awards were handed out just across the street from us at the Dolby Theater uh, last night. Janelle Monet opened the show with a version of the Mr. Rogers song, It's a Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which was a nice idea, a clever idea, but as those of you who lined up on Hollywood Boulevard know, there has never been a beautiful anything in this neighborhood. This neighborhood, <laughs> this is where homeless Spider-Men gather to steal <laughs> wallets from Canadians. That's what we do here. A lot of the focus going into the show last night was on the lack of diversity. All the acting nominees, but one were Caucasian. And, and what do you do when you have a diversity problem? Well, you hit them with the world's most famous white rapper, Eminem. That's what you do. <laughs> I actually learned a lot last night. For instance, that song from Frozen 2, equally annoying in every language. It's, there are plenty of controversial moments. I think Trump gained another 15% of the vote after those acceptance speeches last night. Bottom line, don't expect to see the Joker doing a Got Milk commercial anytime soon. <laughs> the big winner last night was Parasite. The movie won four Oscars, including Best Picture. Parasite, if you haven't seen it, you should. It's very good. It's a South Korean film that tells the story of a family who cons their way into a house they have no business living in, and things go very wrong from there. The American version of it is called The Trumps. It's um, <laughs> also known as Parasite. <laughs> He's now tanning with just a bucket. <laughs> Bong Joon-ho won Best Screenplay and Best Director. It's the first time a non-English language film won Best Picture, and the first time a guy named Bong won anything other than a hacky sack contest. So, but this guy, he was the highlight of the night. He used the translator for most of his remarks, but he also made the most of the English he does know backstage. It was the same process making this film, but we've had these amazing results. It still feels very surreal. I feel like something will hit me and I will wake up from this dream. It's really crazy. <laughs> to put it succinctly, yes. <laughs> anyway, move over, large glass contraption on Seth Rogen's nightstand. Hollywood has a new favorite bong. <laughs> The uh, show last night was the lowest rated Oscars ever by a lot. They, they had a parasite and no host, which makes no sense. But while the ratings were down here in the United States, this is a show that's seen all over the globe. And many of the 225 countries that air the Oscars sent correspondence. This is red carpet coverage from Sweden. And keep an eye on who shows up at the end of this clip. Here comes also Salma Hayek. Hello, Salma, how are you doing? what was more embarrassing, the Swedish guy mistaking Penelope Cruz for Salma Hayek or Al Pacino mistaking Guillermo for a real reporter on the red carpet? <laughs> Did you have fun last night, Gary? <laughs> a lot of fun. Oh, you got a lot of great stars, huh? It was a good one. Oh, yeah, we're going to show you that in a minute. All the big stars are a part of this um, moments from now. Attorney General William Barr has confirmed that the Justice Department is conducting a review of whatever nonsense Rudy Giuliani dug up or digs up on the Bidens in Ukraine. And that is that brings up an interesting question, which is how many times can we impeach the same president? I don't, maybe it'll be four. I don't know. But Trump is shaking those tiny fists at his enemies. He's, he's acting to punish those who testified against him. Over the weekend, he fired Gordon Sondland, the ambassador to the EU, and he also removed Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman from the National Security Council. He had him escorted from the building where he works. I guess Susan Collins was right. He definitely learned his lesson after the <laughs> trial. But both men who were fired testified under subpoena, which means Trump is now firing people for obeying the law. Lieutenant Vindman is a highly decorated officer. He's a recipient of the Purple Heart. And the president weighed in on him on Twitter. He wrote, fake news CNN and MSDNC keep talking about <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Vindman as though I should think only how wonderful he was. Actually, I don't know him, never spoke to him or met him. I don't believe, but he was very insubordinate, reported contents of my perfect calls incorrectly, and was given a horrendous report by his superior, the man he reported to, who publicly stated that Vindman had problems with judgment, adhering to the chain of command, and leaking information, in other words, out. 
he's firing the people who testified against him. And no one seems, well, I guess some people have a problem with it, but not enough people. One Trump advisor said the president is flushing out the pipes, which is also what he calls ordering a black coffee and a filet of fish. But uh, <laughs> not only did he fire one Vindman, he also fired Vindman's twin brother, who didn't, he didn't even testify. I guess Trump told the staff, look, get rid of anyone that looks like that guy. <laughs> And Trump is now also targeting Nancy Pelosi for tearing up his State of the Union speech. Well, I thought it was a terrible thing when she ripped up the speech. First of all, it's an official document. You're not allowed. It's illegal what she did. She broke the law. <laughs> well, then, <laughs> then lock her up, right? Isn't that how we do it? And if you think all that is bad, when did you see the budget Trump unveiled today? Uh, this budget makes major cuts to Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, food stamps, environmental protection, and children's health insurance, and it would cut funding for the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, which seems like a great idea with the coronavirus brewing. This de is definitely the time to make cuts to the CDC, but be not concerned because today, Trump announced that he has a handle on the coronavirus too. Now, the virus that we're talking about having to do, you know, a lot of people think that goes away in April with the heat, as the heat comes in. Uh, typically, that will go away in April. Uh, again, as I mentioned, by April or during the month of April, the heat, generally speaking, kills this kind of virus. So that right. could be a good thing. Right. But we're in great shape in our country. Yes, yes. Uh, don't worry. Global warming is here to stop the coronavirus. <laughs> it's not the heat. It's the stupidity, really. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Oh, oh, oh.